Uh, first of all, good evening to everyone. And as you said, uh, Ruben, the weather's nice outside, so it's harder to, <laughs> to get away from the beautiful weather. But uh, I can see one or two are sitting outside, so we get a boast, the best of both. We can sit outside and have a share. Okay. <clears throat> um, the uh, topic that we're going to discuss today, I'm not sure if it got sent out on the NIHS email. Uh, I was in touch with uh, Mrs. Rabo, and yesterday it wasn't sent out, and she said she would send it out today, but when they did, they didn't. The topic that we're going to discuss today is about Eruv Tavshilin. Eruv Tavshilin sounds like an um, easy topic, but part of it is easy, part of it's a little bit more complicated. But let's hope with the time we have tonight, we can uh, understand a little bit more uh, what Erev Tavshilin is all about. And hopefully if we have some time before the end of the hour, we can go a little bit into uh, the Chag of Shavuos and get some uh, nice thoughts on that as well. But in general, to begin with, we're going to discuss the mitzvah of Erev Tavshilin. Now, why am I choosing Erev Tavshilin? I'm sure you all know. Because this, uh, this year, Shavuos falls on a Friday. And when we go from a Chag to a Shabbat, we know that there's a mitzvah, as it says in the Luach, do Erev Tavshilin. Now, it's not just a matter of doing it. If we understand it, then uh, what we're doing will it'll be uh, of more clarity. So because next week we have to do Erev Tavshilin before Yom Tov, on that's next Thursday. So we're going to understand the ins and the outs of the mitzvah of Erev Tavshilin. So I'm going to share with you my screen for a minute just to show you the main topics that we're going to go through on Erev Tavshilin, then we'll be clearer together, step by step. So I'm just going to share with you my screen. Okay, so you should see my screen. Um, here I've put down eight points that I would like to work through together in the time that we have on Erev Tavshilin. Number one, is why do we need to make an Erev Tavshilin? Number two is how does it work? And what does the word Erev mean? Number three is the best way to actually do it, how to actually make the Erev Tavshilin. Number four is does it allow me to do any Melacha? So we'll go into the discussion about exactly what Erev Tavshin allows. Number five, which is a very important point, they're all important points, but this is a question that many ask, is does everyone need to do it? Do I need to make Erev Tavshin? Or if I don't need it, I don't need to make it. So we'll discuss that soon. Number six is what to do with it after you've made it. Okay, so I made my Erev Tavshin. What do I do with it? Number seven is also a very important point, which also happens. What happens if you forgot? Is it okay? What can I do? And number eight is this year, the second day of Yom Tov, it's Shabbos. So it's slightly different than some years. Some years we go from Thursday, Friday, Chag, and then to Shabbos. This year we have Friday the Chag and straight into Shabbos. So does it make a difference or does it not make a difference? Okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing and I'll come back to you. Okay, I hope everyone could see the screen over there. And that was the eight points that we're going to work through, step by step. And hopefully if we've worked through these eight points, the whole idea of Erev Tashinim will be clear for all of us. There are some areas of Erev Tashinim, which is what we call gray area, not so clear, but um, we'll get clear as much as it's possible to get clear. Okay, let's begin like this. The, what is the main difference between Shabbos and Yom Tov? If I would ask you, I know everyone's on mute, but if you think to yourself, the Torah says don't do a melacha on Shabbos, and the Torah says don't do a melacha on Yom Tov. So why is Yom Tov so much easier? We see we can do many things, it's not so strict. Shabbos is much stricter. Why is Yom Tov much lighter than Shabbos? Okay, so the answer for that is obviously a very, very clear pasuk in the Torah. 
I'm going to show you the Pasuk in the Torah, where it starts from, but we'll see why Yom Tov is different than Shabbos. So the Pasuk says, I'm going to scroll down this page a little bit. I've tapped up the Pasuk. You can look it up for yourself. It's the Pasuk in Pasha's boy. The Torah says, Ubayoyim Harishon. This is actually referring to Pesach, but it refers to all Yom Tovim. Ubayoyim Harishon, on the first day of Pesach, Mikro Kodesh, it's a holy day. Ubayoyim Hashvi, and on the seventh day of Pesach, Mikro Kodesh, it's also Kodesh. The first and last day of Pesach. In the middle is Cholomoyed. Kol Melocha, says the Torah. This is in Parshish Boy. For those of you who want to look it up, it's Sefer Shemois, Perik Yud Beis, Posuk Tes Zion. 12, six, uh, six, um, 15. Tes, uh, 16. 12, 16. Continues the Posuk. I'll put my cursor over there. Kol Melocha Lo Ye Osobahem. You can't do any Melocha on Yom Tov. So, so far, Yom Tov and Shabbos is the same. But here comes the big difference. Carries on the Pasuk in Pasha's boy. Ach, but. Ashe ye ochel lechol nefesh. Anything that has to do with eating, what a person needs to eat, hu levado ye lachem. That alone can be prepared. So if you look at trans, it's translated over here in the bold. Only what every person is to eat. That alone may be prepared for you. So that's a pasuk in Pasha's boy. This is, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. So if you look up that pasuk, we see this is the opening for Yom Tov being much, much lighter than Shabbos. Shabbos, everything is also. You have the Lam Tes Malachas. When it comes to Yom Tov, we see that something got to do with Oichel Nefesh, something got to do with food, you are allowed to do. Now, Obviously, the Torah is only referring to Yom Tif. What you need for Yom Tif, you're allowed to do on Yom Tif. So let's take a normal year where Yom Tif is in the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, I forgot to make my schnitzel, I forgot to make my, uh, my chicken, whatever it was. Okay, no problem. The Torah says to me, I'm allowed to cook my chicken today because it's Oichel Nefesh, it's what I need to eat. That's simple, that's fine. The problem begins, and this is where we start getting towards the direction of Erev Tavshilin. What happens if I want to cook from Yom Tov to after Yom Tov? Am I allowed to do that or not? The Torah says, don't cook. The Torah says, on Yom Tov, you're allowed to cook what you need to eat. Okay. But here, I'm not cooking on Yom Tov for Yom Tov. I'm cooking on Yom Tov for after Yom Tov. So this is a big discussion in the Gemara in Mesechtes Beitzer. And obviously, I won't go through the whole Gemara, but I want to pick out the exact, uh, the main points of the Gemara, which we need for our share today. There's a machlokas in the Gemara, whether if I cook today plenty food, plenty food, let's take a normal yom to the middle of the year. I'm going to make a nice big meal. Do I have to cook a limited amount? Or I can cook as much as I want? Says one opinion in the Gemara, I can cook as much as I want. Why? Because maybe in the last minute, a guest is going to come. And what happens if a guest comes? I'm going to need food for him. If I need food for him, I'm going to be stuck. So therefore, I'm allowed to cook today as much as I want. Because maybe a guest is going to come. That's called hoy il. Hoy il is maybe. Maybe a guest is going to come. The other opinion says, absolutely not. You're only allowed to cook today exactly what you need today. To say, perhaps a guest is going to come, I can cook more. We don't say such a thing. Okay, so let's get this stage clear. To cook from Yom Tov to after Yom Tov, if it's clear that I'm not cooking for today, it's not for a guest, for example, it's towards the end of the day. It's 10 minutes before the end of Yom Tov. There's no chance a guest is going to come. I'm not cooking for a guest. I'm only cooking for after Yom Tov. Then it's clear, according to everyone, I'm not allowed to cook. Even though the Torah says you are allowed to cook on Yom Tov, but that is only if it's for today. If it's for the next day, you're already hitting a problem of cooking not for Yom Tov. Okay. Now let's go to our Yom Tov next week. Shavuos is Friday. The next day is Shabbos. Am I allowed to cook from Friday to Shabbos? 
Now we're discussing before Erev Tavshilin. You haven't made the Erev Tavshilin. Am I allowed to cook from Friday to Shabbos? So we discussed so far two cases. Yom Tov for Yom Tov. That's clear. That's okay. Yom Tov to weekday. So we said if it's clearly not for Yom Tov, it's 100% for Chol, for the day after Yom Tov, then according to everyone, it's a problem because you're not cooking on Yom Tov for Yom Tov. What about cooking from Yom Tov to Shabbos? Says the Gemara, very interesting. Says the Gemara two things over here. Number one, if I cook on Yom Tov, now, if I cook on Yom Tov and I am cooking only for you, if I'm allowed to cook on Yom Tov without an air of Tavshilin, says the Gemara according to one opinion, perhaps I won't think about, I won't have enough food prepared for Shabbos. And therefore, it's not allowed to cook without an Erev Tavshilin from Friday to Shabbos. Says opinion number two, that if I am allowed to cook on Friday for Shabbos, sorry, without an Erev Tavshilin, then I'll eat up all the food. If, sorry, if I'm not allowed to cook from Friday to Shabbos, then I'm I'll, I'll eat up all my food and I won't have any food for Shabbos. Says so the Gemara like this. This is very interesting. Min to cook from Yom Tov to Chol is a problem. The Rabbonon said, don't come and cook from Friday to Shabbos. Why? Because if I cook on Friday to Shabbos, then like we said before, you could be Mechal Shabbos by not uh, making sure you have enough food for Friday. You'll only cook from Friday itself. So what's very clear over here so far is the Rabbonon stopped you. The Rabbonon said something like this. The Rabbonon said, do not cook from Friday to Shabbos. It wasn't the Issa Do'iraisa. It was an Issa de Rabbonon. Don't cook from Friday to Shabbos. And the Gemara explains, like we said before, why not? So now, we only need an area of Tavshilin in the situation where the Rabbonon said, don't cook. Comes the Rabbonon and said, if you do area of Tavshilin, which will explain soon how it works, then you can cook. So there's obviously a famous rule everywhere the Rabbonon can't allow something which is Osam awesome Minatera. The Rabbonon are only allowed to allow something if it's okay Minatera, and perhaps they said it's not good. They can say this situation is okay. If something is Osam awesome Minatera, the Rabbonon can't say it's Muta. They haven't got that power. They haven't got the Koyach just to go against the Torah. So the Rabbonon said next Friday, don't cook for Shabbos. For whatever reason, we, like we said before, the Gemara says, but, says the Rabbonon, if you do something before Yom Tov, then you are allowed to cook on Friday for Shabbos. So, question number one, which, we, which I brought up on the paper before was, why do we need to make an Erev Tavshilin? So the answer for that is, because without an Erev Tavshilin, the Rabbanon said, next Friday, you're not allowed to cook food for Shabbos. You're allowed to cook on Friday for Yom Tov. Or if Yom Tov is Thursday, Friday, you can also cook for Thursday and for Friday. But you want to cook food for Shabbos, says the Rabbanon, don't. The Rabbanon said, don't cook for Shabbos because you might not have enough food for Shabbos. Whatever the reason said, the Rabbanon said, let me just see if I can bring it up on the screen. Okay, I'll just tell you by heart what the Gemara says. Another reason why you should not cook from Friday for Shabbos is because if you come to cook from Friday to Shabbos, you might come to cook from Friday for after Shabbos. And Friday for after Shabbos is from Yom Tov Tuchol. Yom Tov Tuchol is the Issa Doi Raisa. Says the Rabbonon, don't even cook from Yom Tov to a Shabbos. Now, says the Rabbonon, okay. If you haven't made the Erev Tavshin, then you're not allowed to cook because we said don't cook. We also say something that's going to help you. 
if you make an area of tafshilin, then you can cook. Now, how, question number two, how does the area of tafshilin work? And what does the word Eruv actually mean when it comes to Eruv Tavshilin? So, I'm going to share with you where it starts from. This is a Rashi in Masech Des Beitzel. I'll share with you the words of the Rashi. And this is brought down in Shulchan Aruch. So I'll just show you with the screen and you'll see exactly how Rashi explains how an Eruv Tavshilin works. Now, most of us know exactly what we do. But the point over here is not just to know what we do, but to understand why we do it and how it works. So I'm just going to share with you the Rashi in Masech Des Beitzel. You can look it up. Rashi says in Masech Des Beitzel as follows. I'm going to scroll down here. Here's a Rashi you should see on your screen. Rashi says as follows, Rashi Masech Des Beitzel Das Davtes Vov Omad Beis. Rashi in Beitzel 15b. Says Rashi, Elo im Kain, only if, Hischil mi b'oid yoim, you have started from the middle of the day, which Rashi means that you started cooking in our situation next week, you started cooking already on Thursday. So Thursday is before Yom Tov next week. Thursday is Chau. So this is the discussion of how the air of Tafshilin works. Explains Rashi. Hischil mib oid yoim. You started cooking on Thursday next week in the middle of the day. Next Thursday afternoon, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You're cooking now for Yom Tov. Carries on Rashi and these are very, very important boy words. The Einoi it isn't Ella only Kegoimer Vahoilech. You're continuing and finishing. Goimer is continuing finishing Vahoilech and continuing. Aval Bat Aschuli Loi. You are not beginning. So those are the words of Rashi. Rashi says when you make an error of Tafshilin on Thursday, that means before Yom Tov, in some situations it could be Wednesday because Yom Tov is Thursday, Friday. Let's go to next week, where Yom Tov is Friday. So you make an air of Tafshilin on Thursday. How does that work? What's that doing? Says Rashi, when you start cooking with your air of Tafshilin on Thursday next week, so when you continue to cook on Friday, you're not, con you're not starting to cook now from Friday to Shabbos. Says Rashi, you are continuing and finishing from before Yom Tov. Avol aschuli loi. Aschuli loi, you're not beginning. Okay, let me stop and come back to you. These are important ones. What's Rashi telling us over here? Rashi is explaining to us exactly what Erev Tafshilin is doing. Erev Tafshilin is when you take, we'll explain soon exactly what you take. You take certain foods before Yom Tov. And you make a bracha, and we'll see the nusach of the bracha soon. But before we get to that, what are you doing? You are taking food before Yom Tov. That means you are starting to cook before Yom Tov. You're baking, you're cooking, so you'll see soon you take your bread or you take your chicken. With that, you are showing and you're doing something. You are showing that I'm starting before Yom Tov, and now on Friday next week, when I cook for Shabbos, I'm not starting to cook for Shabbos. I am continuing to cook for Shabbos. Continuing to cook for Shabbos says the Rabbanon is okay. That's the point. That means the Rabbanon said on Friday don't start cooking for Shabbos. Why? Because maybe if I start cooking on Friday for Shabbos, you might start cooking on Friday for after Yom Tov. So Rabbanon said don't. Don't start cooking on Friday for Shabbos. Okay, it's only a Isidara Bonon. The Rabbonon said, if you do something, then you can cook from Friday for Shabbos. What did the Rabbonon say? Do an air of Tafshilin. Says Rashi, and in Shukhan Aruch says the same explanation. If I take an air of Tafshilin, I'm starting to cook before Yom Tov. On Friday, I am continuing to cook. I'm not starting to cook. 
Therefore, there's no gazera that you might come to cook from Friday to after Yom Tov because I did an Erev Tafshilin. The Erev Tafshilin shows that the only reason why I'm cooking for Friday and Shabbos is because I did an Erev Tafshilin. So, if I haven't made an Erev Tafshilin, I can't cook. We'll see later what happens if you forgot if there's a way out. But simple as of now, Erev Tafshilin allows you to continue to cook from before Yom Tov on Friday for Shabbos. Okay, let's go a little bit uh, further. We said in point number two is what exactly does the word Eruv mean? Eruv Tafshilin. Now, the only place that we know the Eruv is an Eruv in a city, an Eruv in Amsterdam, an Eruv round the place, or an Eruv Chatseros, which is, allows you to carry within the building. If you have an apartment building, so you can make an Eruv Chatseros. What's Eruv Tafshilin mean in our situation? Why are you being Ma'arav? You're not, nothing to do with carrying. What's this word Eruv mean? So there's a few explanations, but let's just take one, which is the, the basic explanation and which is uh, the most understandable explanation. The way we explain now is that the cooking on Friday is a, con a continuation of your cooking from before Yom Tov. I'm not starting, said Rashi, on Friday. You're continuing. So the word Eruv explains uh, it's the Hagor writes in Shulchan Aruch, you can look it up, um, in Tov Kuf Chof Zayin, it's 527, says that Hagor, I'll read out the words like this, Ha'enyan Ha'eruv hu, she'yevashel, you cook, ve'yoyfe, and you bake from Yom Tov to Shabbos, that means next Friday you're cooking and baking, im, this is a very important word, im means with. So you're cooking and baking on Friday with, what you already cooked on Erev Yom Tov. So the word Eruv means I'm joining together. I'm being Ma'arev. Ma'arev is a mix, a joint, Eruv, a mixture. What are you joining? You're joining next week's Thursday baking and cooking together with next week's Friday baking and cooking. That's the Eruv Tavshilin. You're joining your baking and cooking from before Yom Tov with your joining and cooking and baking on Friday. So that's very clear. Because I'm only not allowed to start baking and cooking on Friday for Shabbos. If I've already started before Yom Tov, then I'm allowed to continue and I'm being me'arvev, I'm being me'eruv, I'm joining the two cookings, the one from before Yom Tov together with the one on Yom Tov. Okay. So step one and step two, I think so far is clear. And that is, why we need to do an Erev Tavshilin, as we explained, and how does it work, and what the word Eruv means. Let's continue, and then we'll come to some interesting cases, interesting stories, and some uh, questions on Erev Tavshilin. Hopefully we have some time, we'll still uh, leave some questions, unmute, and have some questions from, from the Oilam. Okay, point number three was the best way to do it. If we take into account the, everything that we discussed till now, we'll understand what the best way is and why that's the best way. Says the Allah in Shulchan Aruch, you can look it up, it's Tov Kuv Chof Zayin, which is 527 in Arachayim. Says the Arachayim, what should you do? The best way you should do it is take a bread, something baked, and a tavshil, something cooked. So what most people do, I don't know what each of you in your own homes, in your own situations you do, but in general, what most people do and what you should do the best way is take a baked, like a challah, and a tavshil, something cooked. It could be a piece of chicken. So let's talk about a piece of challah and a piece of chicken. I take a piece of challah and I take a piece of chicken. What am I doing with that? Like we said before, you are starting to bake and cook on next Thursday. I'm baking, I'm cooking. L'chavod Yom Tov. And I say, with this baking and cooking that I have done, it should be allowed to be able to cook and bake tomorrow. That means next Thursday, I'm allowing with my Eruv to be able to cook and bake also on Friday. So the best thing to do is to take a baked and a cooked thing because I want to continue baking and cooking. We'll see soon about different malachas. We'll discuss that soon. But for the moment, the basics is to bake and cook before Yom Tov, continue baking and cooking on Yom Tov. So that's why the Mechaber says in Shulchan Aruch, 
Tov Kuv Chav Zayin, Sif Beis, you take a pass and a Tavshil, and you say that I want to continue tomorrow with this baking and cooking. And some Achroinim explain that what happens if I go and take something baked and cooked from the freezer, which I put in the freezer two weeks ago. I go to my freezer and I take out uh, old challah and an old piece of chicken, which has been lying there since Pesach, and I say, with this chicken and with this challah, I want to make an Arab Tavshinin. Lahalacha, perhaps it can work, but it's definitely not the best way. Why? Because the whole understanding, like we explained, of Erev Tavshinin is, I'm starting to bake and cook today, and I want to continue to bake and cook. If I'm just taking something from the freezer, some challah and some piece of chicken, I haven't started and baked and cooked anything today. It's old stuff. So it's not the best. A lalocha it probably does work. Because I took a pass, I'm showing that I'm starting today and I want to continue tomorrow. But it's definitely more muhuga to take something which you've started and baking cooking today and continue on Friday with what I've already started as. Okay, let's come to next point number four and then uh, we'll move on. Point number four was, which I showed you on the screen, is what exactly, this is a very important point of Erev Tavshinin. What exactly does Erev Tavshinin allow me to do? Is it like an open check, a blank header? I've made now Erev Tavshinin, I can do whatever I want. I could put the lights on, I could do what I want, because Erev Tavshinin said, don't do malachas, and now I can do malachas. So, here it gets a little bit more complicated, but we'll, we'll, we'll together we'll, we'll come out with a, a, a clarity for us exactly what the Erev Tavshinun allows. We started off with the Posuk, which said, Ach lechol nefesh, only things which are for eating. Okay, Oichel Nefesh is Mutter. So the head of the Torah for Yom Tov over Shabbos was anything got to do with Oichel Nefesh, for eating. What exactly is included in that? Whatever I need for eating, I'm allowed to do? And I need to go, uh, I need to make a schnitzel now. Okay, so I can go, now shecht an animal, I can do whatever I want, I could put on the fire, I can do anything got to do because I need to make a, a schnitzel on Shabbos. So here the, let's ask another question before we come to that answer. We all know, let's say for example, hoitzo'o, to carry. To carry on Yom Tov is muta even without an Eruv. What's carrying got to do with Oichel Nefesh? Why is carrying on Yom Tov muta? And there's some other examples of certain Melochas are muta on Yom Tov, but we, at the beginning, we bought a Pasuk in Pasha Shemois that said, Acha Shei Ochel Chol Nefesh, only something which is for eating purposes. So here comes a very interesting Yesoid, which is called Mitoich. Mitoich, mem tof vov chof. Mitoich means since. What does that mean? It's a short part of the sentence. The sentence actually continues. Mitoich shehutra letzoyrech, hutra sheloy letzoyrech. That means since we allowed you to do something letzoyrech oichel nefesh, we allowed you to do something even not letzoyrech oichel nefesh. Which means, and we'll explain. Why am I allowed to carry on Yom Tov? Because if I need to go to my next door neighbor and carry some food for the meal, it's Oichel Nefesh, it's something which I need for my meal. So Chazal said, you're allowed to do this Melacha for Oichel Nefesh, you can do the same Melacha even if it's not for Oichel Nefesh. Now, we have, we have, yeah, one has to be very clear exactly how far this Gede goes. But in general, the rule is mitoich. If something was mutter letzorich oichel nefesh, it's mutter also not letzorich oichel nefesh. But the only reason why it's mutter is because it came from the, the gedda of the Torah of only something which is oichel nefesh is mutter. Okay, let's ask ourselves a simple question. This question is negate to all of us. Next Friday night or next uh, Thursday night, everyone lights candles. You light candles, you light candles for the Yom Tov, you light candles for the Shabbos. Now lighting candles for Shabbos. I am doing a melacha on Friday for Shabbos. 
Now, is that mutter because I did my area of tafshilin? Or is that has no connection to my area of tafshilin? The question is as follows. Is the lighting of my candles next Friday afternoon for Shabbos a connection to area of tafshilin or no connection whatsoever? Our question is, what exactly is area of tafshilin allowing? It's allowing what we said till now was cooking and baking. Next Friday afternoon, I want to bake a cake for Shabbos. I want to bake some challahs for Shabbos. If I made the air of Tafshilin, no problem. If I didn't make an air of Tafshilin, you're not allowed to. What happens if I didn't make an air of Tafshilin? Can I still light my candles next Shabbos? Perhaps, yeah, perhaps not. Why, yeah, why no? I would say more of a reason not. Because if you're lighting on Friday afternoon, you're doing a melacha from Friday to Shabbos. A Friday afternoon, the melacha of lighting the candles. I didn't make Erev Tavshilin. How can I do work for Shabbos? Or Erev Tavshilin had nothing to do with lighting candles for Shabbos. Because Erev Tavshilin is for cooking and baking. What's it got to do with lighting candles for Shabbos? So this is a long discussion in the Achreinim. Um, it's something which I spoke to today when I was look, looking at the sugi, learning the sugi, I spoke to two different rabbis to discuss and ask this question. And I must say, I know it sounds uh, maybe normal or different or strange, but I got different answers. So it's, it's, it's a gray area. Like I said before, there's some areas which are complicated. And the big question is exactly what's included within the area of Tavshilin. Do I need it for lighting candles? So someone pointed out, if you look at the nusach, the wording of the Erev Tavshilin, it's in Aramaic and it says, it allows me to cook and bake and do and to light my candles. That's part of the nusach. If you look at the nusach in your siddur of Erev Tavshilin, it says also, with this Erev I should be allowed to do this and this and this and also to light my candles. So following the nusach of the Erev Tavshilin that we say after the bracha, I would say that lighting the candles is only allowed because it's a, pre a preparation from Friday to Shabbos. And only with that preparation, only with an area of Tafshin can I do that preparation. Okay, so I'll leave that area a little bit open. And if any of you have any thoughts after the share, or we can always be in touch. But the, the, that, that's an area which is, there's a big discussion about. Let's go to number five. We're moving on to time five, six, seven, and then I'll wrap it up and then a few chidushim and hopefully get on to Shavuos. And I still want to hear some questions and discussion. Number five is a very big, a very big question. Do I need to make an Erev Tavshilin? You would say, like, why not? Obviously, why not? Why shouldn't you make Erev Tavshilin? The question that people ask is, I've prepared all my food before Shabbos, before Yom Tov. My wife is organized, I'm organized, my family is organized, whatever the situation is, next Wednesday, everything's done. Everything's ready. Everything's in the fridge, everything's in the freezer, everything's bought, whatever it is. I don't need to do anything on Yom Tov for Shabbos. So I'm not going to make an Erev Tav Shilin. What, what should I make it for? Does he need to make? Is this guy right or is he wrong? Is he correct? I don't need to make an Erev Tavshilin. I'm not going to make it. We said the only reason for Erev Tavshilin is to be able to cook or do work from Friday for Shabbos. I don't need to do any work. Everything is done. That's a very good question. So what's the answer? Does he or doesn't he? It's an answer, a question which I'm sure many of us have. Everything's prepared. Who want, many people don't want to cook. Uh, I can tell you personally, my wife doesn't want to cook on Yom Tov for Shabbos. She wants everything done. She doesn't want to do anything on Yom Tov. Why? She wants to enjoy Yom Tov. Some people want things fresh and they want to do it on Yom Tov. Okay, but let's discuss those people who ask a straightforward question. Do I need to make an Erev Tav Shilin? Everything's ready. I'm not going to cook on Friday. The answer is, it depends a little bit on the situation. If we go with the fact that you might need Erev Tav Shilin even just to light your Shabbos candles. That means you're doing work from Friday for Shabbos. You're lighting your candles on Friday and it's for Shabbos. Then it could be that even just for lighting your candles, without cooking, without baking, you'll have to already do an Erev Tavshilin. 
So if a basic person is going to have a home, is lighting the candles. So if we go with that, that for lighting candles, you would have Erev Tavshilin, okay, then he's going to have to make an Erev Tavshilin. Let's go to a person, or if we hold that for, Erev, for lighting candles, you don't need to make an Erev Tavshilin. So should this person still make an Erev Tavshilin or not? So the answer is, really, what you're thinking to yourself, I guess, is why should he? <laughs> the only reason is to continue cooking and baking. I'm not going to continue. So you're right. Really, you're right. He doesn't need to make an Erev Tavshilin. If it's 100% guaranteed, let's say, for example, there's a Bocha Yeshiva or Bocha studying a girl in seminary or a person who's by themselves and they're eating out all meals on Yom Tov. Is there any reason for him to make Erev Tavshilin? No. There's no reason. Because he's not going to bake, he's not going to cook, he's not going to do any malachas. There's no really reason. Again, if I hold that lighting candles doesn't need, and this person is going to light candles, or in a situation where he's not going to light candles, someone's lighting for him, or he's a guest by someone else's house, then he does not need to make an Erev Tavshinin. But the advice that, that, that's written in Sforim is that... It, in most situations, a person will need to do or will do something from Friday for Shabbos. So, if, even if a person's only taking the food out of the freezer and putting it on the hot plate, that could be enough of a reason in its own to have to make an Erev Tavshilin. So, in general, if it's clear 100% that the person's not going to cook and bake, it doesn't need to make an Erev Tavshilin. But usually the situation is a person might need something and therefore he is advised to, yes, make an Erev Tavshilin. Now, point number six was what to do with it after you've made it. Okay, so next Thursday afternoon, I made my Erev Tavshirin. I took my bread, I took my chicken, I made a brocha, and I said, with this Erev, I should be allowed to cook and bake on Friday for Shabbos. What do I do with it now? Back in the freezer? Eat it for lunch on Friday, on Thursday? What do I do with it? And here's something very important, which we all need to know, because... If we do the wrong thing with it, we could be in problems. And that is, again, this goes with how we, how we explained Erev Tavshilin until now. One has to keep the Erev Tavshilin till Shabbos. You have a bread and you have a piece of chicken and you made a bracha with it. Put it aside and keep it till Shabbos. Why? Because we said the Eruv means you're continuing to cook and bake on Friday together with what I have started before Shabbos. So if it's all gone, then there's no Eruv. There's no, con there's no connection between my cooking and baking on Friday. So, Lahalocha, it's very, very clear in Shulchan Aruch. After you've made your Eruv Tavshilin, don't eat it. Keep it somewhere safe until Shabbos. Because on Friday afternoon, when I want to cook and bake, I want it to be connected. I want it to be Eruv. I want to join my preparation from Friday together what I still have. If it's gone, then I have a problem. Then the Shukhra writes, if it's gone, perhaps, double check with your, with your Rav, but if it's completely gone, perhaps you can't, rely on the Erev Tavshin anymore because your Erev is gone. It's like if an Erev breaks in the town, there's no Erev. If your Erev is eaten up, there's no Erev. So perhaps you can't start, you can't continue on Friday for Shabbos. So therefore, once you've made the Erev Tavshin, keep it until Shabbos. On Shabbos, you can eat it. Here's a very interesting side point, which is uh, worthwhile mentioning. And that is, in general, by mitzvahs, there's a rule called given the ovid bo mitzvah achas, yavid bo mitzvah acheres, which means once you've done one mitzvah with an object, try and do as many mitzvahs as you can with the same object. So it's very interesting. You have over here a piece of bread. I've done a mitzvah with it. I did a mitzvah, the Rabbonon. It's a mitzvah, the Rabbonon. It's one of the seven mitzvahs. It's important to know. Mitzvah's area of Tavshilin is one of the seven mitzvahs, the Rabbonon. It's a mitzvah, the Rabbonon. 
I should try and do another mitzvah with the bread. Now let's think to ourselves, what mitzvah can I do with this bread? What can I do with it? A mitzvah, what, what, what mitzvah can I do? So you're perhaps thinking to yourself, I can feed, four, I can feed the poor people with it. But, but we just said, don't use it up, keep it. So what mitzvah can I do with it? I don't want to feed the birds. I don't want to feed poor people. What should I do? So here's something very interesting. The Shulchan Aruch, uh, Aruch, the write that it's very simple. I have to make on Yom Tov, Lechem Mishnah. I'm supposed to take two breads and say, Baruch Atu Hashem Lekinim Elech Oilam, I'm Mitzi Lechem Menorets, on Yom Tov and on Shabbos. So it's nicer to use the bread which you use for your area of Tavshilin, to use it also for your Lechem Mishnah. Because something which you've done one a mitzvah with it, try and do with that same thing a mitzvah again. It's beautiful, it's nice. So therefore, you use it for Erev Tavshilin, use it for Lechem Mishnah on Yom Tov and on Shabbos. And what people do is they use it for Sudash Lishis on Shabbos because that's the end, the last time you can't do any other mitzvahs with the bread because you've already done um, Lechem Mishnah. Another few examples actually for this type of idea is um, people take the Arovas from the Arba Minim and the last day of Sukkot, what they do is they throw it on top of the Oron HaKodesh in the Shul. What happens with it afterwards? So some people take those Aravas, which has been used for a mitzvah of your Arba Minim, of your Luluf and your Esrit. It's been with your Luluf. And they use those, Ar- those Aravas and they burn the Serefas Chomets on Erev Pesach when they make a fire. Because that's also a mitzvah. So I've used... Aravis for one mitzvah. I use the same thing for another mitzvah. It's a beautiful thing to do. One more example, and then we'll go back to Erev Shilin, and that is Besomim. People like to make from the Hadassim, from the Arba Minim, from the Luluf, they like to use that Hadassim also for Besomim, for Motzah Shabbos, for Avdala. Why? Because since you've done one mitzvah with the Hadassim, for the Luluf, it's nice to use that same thing for another mitzvah. What other mitzvah can I do with Hadassim? Havdola, Matzah Shabbos. So here's just a few examples of once you used once something for mitzvah, try and you do it again. So Erev Tavshilin, as we said, in point number six, what to do with it afterwards is to keep it and to try and use it for as many mitzvahs as you can until Shabbos and not to eat it up because if you eat it up, you have a problem. Point number seven was what happens if you forgot? I forgot. What do you want from me? I forgot. I was a busy Erev Yom Tov, traveling, busy, this, that, and other. I forgot. Am I stuck? Now, here's a very interesting halacha, which I don't know that such a type of halacha comes anywhere else, only by Erev Tafshirin. I know that uh, in, in football, you can have a yellow card and a red card, and I think that's the only two cards, right? A yellow card and a red card. If it's too many times, then you're out. I think two or three red cards, right? Two or three red cards, then you're off the game. Okay, I see people are knocking their heads. Two, uh, <laughs> okay, what happens over here by Erev Tavshirin? There's something which is called a one-off. A one-off. So it's not a red card, not a yellow card. Somewhere it's, it's, it's something interesting. It's a new idea. It's a new concept. It's called a one-off. What does that mean? Very interesting. In the Nusach of Erev Tafshirin, we say that with this Erev, I allow everyone, I allow, I'm allowed to cook and bake and light my Shabbos candles on Friday afternoon. The last few words are, Lonu for us, anyone who lives in the town. So usually we say that we rely on the rabbi for saying those few words. But here we, interesting words. Whoever lives in this town can rely on my Eruv. So this allowance is a one-off, which means if a person forgot, he forgot. Doesn't mean he specially forgot. He forgot. He forgot to make Eruv Tavshilin. Once he can rely on what we call the rabbi's Eruv. The rabbi says that my Eruv should allow anyone in my city, which is my city. You can't rely on another city. You have to rely on someone from within your town who has made an area of Tavshilin. You can rely on the rabbi. But what happens if I forgot a second time? A second time, 
He's already, we call him, he's a shoigig. He's a person who's, uh, we, we gave him a one-off and he's happy he got it, but we can't give him a second one. As we say, he's off the field, he's out. So it's an interesting halacha, which I don't see something similar to that in other cases. If a person makes a mistake, then he doesn't get, he gets off. By Erev Tavshinim, we say, a one-off, you can rely on the rabbi who says, anyone who lives in the city. But if a person forgets a second time, then unfortunately, um, he'll have to be invited by his neighbors or family for the meal because if he hasn't got enough food, then he, he can't cook for um, his neighbor. Um, sorry, what are you asking a question? Okay, let's just, uh, let's just uh, wrap up a little bit and come out with a very clear halacha's understanding of the area of Tavshilin, and if we have some time for some questions, and perhaps something, a nice thought on Shavuos. So we had seven, eight points. Number one was, why do we need to make an area of Tavshilin? The point is very clear, because the Rabbonon said, you're not allowed to cook from Friday to Shabbos. The reason for that was, because if I come to cook from Friday to Shabbos, you might cook from Friday to after Shabbos, which is a Issa Doi Raisa. So the Rabbonon said, don't cook Friday to Shabbos. They said, if you make an Eretz Tavshilin, you can cook. How does it work? You start cooking before Yom Tov. Eruv means you join, you continue and cook on Friday. And that shows that you're not starting today. You're continuing from the day before. Point number three was the best way to do it. As we said, the Shukhan Akhra takes a bread and a Tavshil, a cooked and a big thing. I'm starting to cook and bake. Continue to cook and bake on Friday. Does it allow me to do any melacha? So here we said a little bit of a, a gray area where there's a big discussion in exactly how far the area of Tavshilin allows. Does it allow me through the area of Tavshilin to therefore light my candles? So we said that the lotion of the Shulchan Aruch of the area of Tavshilin is also to light my candles from today for tomorrow, even though it's not directly connected to Oichel Nefesh. Does everyone need to make an Erev Tavshilin? So here we said, if it's 100% clear that there's nothing I need to do on Friday for Shabbos, clear, 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 I won't even need to light candles, I won't need to cook, I won't need to bake nothing, then you're right, there's no reason for him to make it. But in general, we say most people will have to do something, even putting the food on the platter or lighting candles. That itself would be enough to have to make an Erev Tavshilin. What to do with it afterwards? We said keep it until Shabbos. Try and do as many mitzvahs with it as you can. If you forgot, unfortunately, if it's more than once, you're stuck. And you'll have to find a nice next door neighbor or a nice family person and say, and you have to be moida al MS. I forgot to make a I haven't got any food in the freezer. I can't cook today. I'm embarrassed, but can I invite myself to you? And if anyone forgot, they're more than welcome to come to me. Because perhaps before the year they thought if we forgot, it's okay. Now I'm telling you it's not okay. So therefore, I don't take responsibility, but you're more than welcome to uh, come to me for a meal. Now, I'm just going to share with you some a nice thought on Shavuos. And then the last few minutes, we'll have some time for some questions, if anyone has. Um, and it's like this. Okay, that's it for the basic halachas of Erev Tavshilin. And just a nice thought that which uh, came to mind on Shavuos. Shavuos is a very interesting Chag. In some ways, it's, uh, it should be the highlight of the year. It's the day the Jews receive the Torah on Mount Sinai. The day the Jews, the whole, the whole, the whole six million people, well, uh, two million people were there at Sinai and they accepted the Torah. On the, other day, on the other side, we see that uh, somehow more of a fuss is made on Pesach and uh, Sukkot and Rosh Hashanah. And if you think about it, actually of Shavuos, there isn't much to do in terms of mitzvahs. It's pretty much a normal day, just a Yom Tov without any mitzvahs. Pesach is full of mitzvahs. You're so busy with the chomets, get rid of it. You're so busy with the matzah. You're so busy with the Arba Koises. Sukkot, you're busy with this, with the Arba Minim. Shavuos is a complete Yom Tif for yourself. There's, besides the davening and besides the Sudas, there's no mitzvahs hayoim especially made for Shavuos. Interesting Yom Tif. 
So there's some explanations on that. What I want to bring out a point over here today is an inter is, is interesting point, and that is like this. We know Shavuos was the day the Jews accepted the Torah and Har Sinai. I want to bring out something that we say every day, and I'm not sure if any of you have actually thought about it, or me, myself, until I was pointed out. Every morning, we say what's called Bircha Sater, the beginning of Shachris, we say something which is called the blessings on the Torah. And I won't read out the whole Nusach, but just two lines I want to read out for you. Line number one is, Baruch Atu HaShem Alekinu Melech Oilom, Asher Kiddishonu B'Mitzvah Sevet Sivonu, Lasoik B'Divrei Soiro. It's a bracha to be involved in the words of the Torah. Bracha number two is, Asher Bocha Abonu Mikol HaAmim, V'Nosan Lonu Esther Osoya. Kodesh Baruch Hu chose us from nations and gave us the Torah. Simple question. Whenever we make a bracha on something, whether it's a bracha on chala, a bracha on your Erev Tavshilin, a bracha on your coke, you make one bracha. Shehakol, Mezoynez, Hamoitzi, Hadoma, whatever it is, you make a bracha. Here, when it comes to bracha satura, we've got a, a few brachas going on over here. Why can't there be one simple bracha on the studying of the Torah? Why does studying a Torah need two brachas? Or more? Question number one. Question number two is, when the person gets an aliyah le Torah, in Shul, he has an aliyah le Torah. So he says one bracha before, and a different bracha afterwards. The one before is, Asher bracha arbonu mikolo amim, and the bracha afterwards is, Asher no san lo teras emes. What are these two brachas? So, question number one was, why are there two brachas on Bircha Satera? And number two, what are the two brachas that we'd say when we get to the Aliyah Satera? So, my Rosh Hashiva from Manchester, some of you might know him, uh, Reb Gavriel Knopfler, he's today at Rosh Hashiva, Yeshiva in Manchester, called Shari Tera. I learned there many years ago. He once told me a beautiful explanation in all this. He said, Studying the Torah, receiving the Torah, has two very important parts to it. There's a part number one, is I am a Jew, and I am part of Klal Yisrael that stood at Har Sinai when the Yidin accepted the Torah from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Vay Moshe. There's a general um, nation, I am part of the Jews that received the Torah on Har Sinai. Number one. Number two is every person individual. I myself have the Torah and I can study and be part of this. So there's the bigger picture and the smaller picture. The bigger picture is that the Jews as a nation received the Torah on Har Sinai. The smaller picture is each person in individual has the opportunity to study and understand and be part of the Torah. So my Rosh Shiva said, the two brachas which we make every morning on studying the Torah are to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for both parts. Part number one is, Asher Kiddishonu B'Mitzvah V'Tzivonu La'asoyk B'Dei V'Sera. We thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who commanded me personally to understand and be part of this Torah which he gave me. The second bracha is, Asher Bochar Bonu Mikol Ho'amim. Asher Bochar Bonu Mikol Ho'amim is, I am part of a nation which was chosen amongst other nations and received the Torah. On both parts, we give a Baruch HaTo Hashem to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. One on the general and one on the individual. The same thing is when the person gets an Aliyah the Torah. The person says at the beginning, Asher Bochar Bonu Mikol Ho'amim, Beginning, he says, thank you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that I am part of this beautiful nation who received the Torah from Arsinai. And then after the Shinnosan Lonu Torah's MS is more an individual. He gave us, gave me the Torah that I can study and I can be part of. A person is thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu on both parts, the general big picture and the more individual part. So now when we come to Shavuos, we have to always keep both these things in mind. Number one, I was part of a big picture. I was part of the Jewish nation that stood at Har Sinai and received the Torah. 
And number two, to realize that I'm not just part of a big picture. I'm actually blessed to individually also be able to study and also be able to understand each person on their own, on their own level. And to that, we thank uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu. So that's just a little thought that I wanted to share with everyone when it comes to uh, Shavuos, to always have this in mind. There's uh, Jews as a general and as a person, as an individual. So if you don't mind, Ruben, just to unmute and if anyone has any questions on Erev Tafshir that we discussed or anything else. And before I forget, um, there's nice notes and there's a little bit more to add which we didn't have time for. Whoever wants is more than welcome to send an email to yudunner at gmail.com at gmail.com Last time I received uh, many emails on uh, questions and discussions and more and more on the sheer. I'm more than happy to share and I'm more than happy to hear if anyone has anything to add or to say. Any any horrors, any uh, any questions, anything uh, oh, yeah. anyone would like to say. Yes. Can you see the notes of the in the chat? There are questions there. Ah, uh, to the, the, the chat. Ah, okay. Oh. Yes. Okay, very good. Oh, okay, so let's go one by one. Um, I don't want to keep everyone too long, so whatever we manage to do in the next minute. I'll start from the first one. Ronnie, I'll say before I forget. Um, this is the question. Why do we need to say a bracha since it's not more than a derech to be able to cook for Shabbos? That's a, a very good question. The answer for that is that the Rabbonon wanted you to do it. There's something called a mitzvah. It's one of the seven mitzvahs. So when we discuss the point of whether you need to do it or don't need to do it, I didn't mention this because there wasn't much time, but now I'm, I'll bring it up. And I some hold, even if I don't need to do it, I should do it because the Rabbonon wanted you to do it. Why did the Rabbonon want you to do it? Because they didn't want there to be a zulzul that you might come to cook from Friday to Shabbat. after to Chol. And that's a problem. So the Rabbonon wanted you making it tafshin to show that never come to cook from Friday to Chol, to weekday, only from Friday to Shabbos. So it's not really just a derech. It's something that they wanted to safeguard the doiraisa of cooking for Friday to home. Um, if it's time for one more question, there's hey. a cousin to use a slice of bread. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, you, you say in the brocha, you say it for everyone in town. So why does it matter if you forgot it? Somebody but else said only, it. One strike and you're out, you did. Yeah. That's like cricket, one strike and out. <laughs> it's called baseball, but um, uh, okay. <laughs> but, Guri, but what, yeah. what is that if, if if you're out and how do you need to show, how you light the Shabbos candles? Oh, so <laughs> that comes in if uh, if Shabbos candles needs the air of Tafshilin. Yeah, that if Shabbos candles needs the air of Tafshilin, and without that, that so there wasn't time for this. That we're now after half past, so everyone's to log out. Don't feel. Um, the thing is that I didn't mention this, but I'll, yeah, now that you're asking, some explain that Shabbos candles are light on Friday afternoon. So I'm actually having a no on Friday for Friday. For Shabbos, okay. So it's continuing into Shabbos. I'm not only doing it for Shabbos. It's it's that's what I said before. It's a little bit gray. It's uh, if I'm, I'm lighting the Shabbos afternoon and I'm going to enjoy. Sorry, on Friday afternoon, I'm going to enjoy it on Friday afternoon. So it could be. That I don't need the area of Shlin. If I forgot, I could still could light. That, that, that area is... That's, that's what they say, ask the rabbi. <laughs> ask, ask your local rabbi. Oh, yeah. but, okay. Um, this, um, I don't want to keep everyone Eon, with the other Wolf question. question. But, sorry, who? Eon Wolf. I remember. Do you have to eat both? That is and the egg. Um, definitely, yeah. It's definitely... Uh, um, do you have to eat both? That's it, the slice of bread and the egg. So I know that uh, the meaning for my father at home was to have both by, by, by such licious. Um, so I, as far as I know, that uh, right. besides the bread, which we all do by such the person should also have the egg because, um, because he wants to join 
the baking of before. If, if, if he's not using it, then it's a bit of a, a bit like sort of half a joke. Then he's baking it, but he's not using it. See, we want to use the baking and the cooking from before and bring it into your Friday Shabbos. If you're just going to sit in the fridge, you're not going to touch it, then you're not joining it together. So we want to eat everything. So it's definitely better to eat the bread and the egg. I'm not going to keep you guys, but uh, what should you do? Shabbos? And the other question was, why, why can you use a slice of bread that you didn't bake by yourself? So you didn't start cooking. Oh, so we said that definitely better to bake and take something which you have done on, let's call it next week, Thursday. If you take a slice of bread from the freezer and uh, something else, a piece of chicken from the freezer, it's definitely lot mahudar because mm -hmm. the whole part of Yom Tov is I'm starting before Yom Tov. I'm continuing on Yom Tov. But if you haven't started anything Yom Tov from the freezer, then it's very, very, what they call shvach. It's very weak. But la halacha, if you took something from the freezer, it's still okay. The reason for that is because the Rabbana said do it because you know they shouldn't come to start cooking and, and baking on, on, on Friday if after. If I've taken the air of Tavshirin, I've shown at least that I'm not going to start baking and cooking for after Yom Tov. I'm only cooking now for Shabbos because I did something before Yom Tov. And, uh, I have another question, if I may. Yeah, yeah. you sure. I know you are a Yekka too, and I know my, my family-in-law also, but we know that from each other, I think. Um, so the, indeed the custom is to eat uh, Erev Tafshilin, um, the third meal. But in fact, Correct. There, maybe there are two reasons not to do that, because the real mitzvah meal is lunchtime. And the other reason can be if you want to eat it uh, with the third meal, and you missed it. Yeah. You forgot. You forgot it and you missed it. Yeah. So the eating eat strike of, out. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the eating of it isn't the most important. That means if you didn't mm -hmm. eat it, that means you've still you've still done the Arab Tafshin before Shabbos and we cooked and baked on Friday. Yeah. So like um, in hindsight, your baking and cooking was bad. Mm. We want to do it because we want it to be the most muda and it's actually part of your baking and cooking. It's like if I took it out of the freezer, it's also okay. It's not muda because we want it to be the best. The best is to eat it and cook it and, uh, and take something fresh and have it at the end of Shabbos. Why the end Anyhow, of Shabbos? Anyhow, don't eat it before Shabbos. You yes. could do the most mitzvahs on it because I can do like a mission on Friday night, Shabbos morning, and Sudash mm -hmm. And the Sudash Lishis, I'm not sure also if it's uh, such a light meal. So, mm -hmm. Sudash dishes can also be a, a proper meal, especially, especially in the summer when the time comes to the dishes, you're happy to have a meal. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to keep everyone, so thank you.